Well, our first story is about the U.S. and Israel. We're on a collision course over the invasion of Rafah. Vice President Kamala Harris threatened consequences if Israel goes forward. <coughs> Prime Minister Netanyahu says invading Rafah is the only path to total victory over Hamas. In Gaza, Israeli forces are taking the fight to Hamas terrorists holed up in the Al Shifa hospital. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. In Gaza, the IDF announced after six days of fighting, it's eliminated 170 Hamas terrorists who used the Al Shifa hospital as a base, and it's captured 800 more. This operation isn't over yet. Right now, Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists are barricading themselves inside the Shifa hospital wards. Hamas is destroying the Shifa hospital. Israel's defense minister is heading to Washington to meet Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and other officials to discuss the war in Gaza and to ensure the flow of weapons and materials necessary for Israel's air defense systems. Also this week, a delegation of Israeli government officials visiting Washington will discuss plans to invade Rafah, the last Hamas stronghold in Gaza. The U.S. opposes the operation and wants to explore alternatives. Sunday, Vice President Kamala Harris wouldn't rule out consequences if Israel launches its operation into Rafah to defeat Hamas. We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafah would be a huge mistake. Those consequences could include placing conditions on future U.S. military aid. On Friday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Secretary of State Israel's decision. I also said that we have no way to defeat Hamas without going into Rafah and eliminating the rest of the battalions there. And I told him that I hope we will do it with the support of the USA. But if we have to, we'll do it alone. Today, Israelis here in Jerusalem are celebrating the biblical feast of Purim, celebrating when Queen Esther defeated a Persian plot to exterminate the Jews. It's especially meaningful this year when Jews again feel they're fighting for their survival after October 7th. The whole world don't understand that never again should not happen again. And what is never? Never is the 7th of October. In Jerusalem, Christians from around the world celebrated Palm Sunday, the day Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey and was hailed by crowds as their Messiah. Even during this time of war, Christians flocked to the holy city, both to worship God and support Israel. I know there's a lot going on here in the Holy Land, and I'm here to pray for the Jews. I'm here to pray for everyone. It's my love of Jesus Christ why I'm here. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Oh, we need to stand with Israel. This is an existential threat to them. Hamas has vowed to repeat October 7 again and again and again. Let's go back to the fight against Nazi Germany. And could you imagine our president, Roosevelt, saying, well, I'm, I'm willing to do a hostage negotiation. I'm, I'm willing to pull back our troops. I'm willing to do, you know, other things. We, we need to have peace. We can't go in and bomb uh, Germany. We can't invade Normandy. We can't, we can't do these things. He would have never thought of it. And he said very clearly, what we need here is unconditional surrender. And that's exactly the message we need to be sending to Hamas. We don't need to be equivocating and showing our weakness. We need to tell them quite clearly, you have to unconditionally surrender. You have to release all the hostages. That seems to be completely forgotten that there are over 100 people still in tunnels against their will. That is a war crime. And all these talks about war crime and all the... Hamas started this. They're the one that invaded on October 7th. They're the one that took the hostages. Let's keep the pressure on. Let's show solidarity with the Israeli people. And when we say never again, we really mean